Hi guys, Jed here. Welcome to another video. In today's lesson, we're going to be doing rationalizing thirds with one term. Now, in order for you to understand the contents of this lesson, you need to know how to be able to add, subtract, divide, multiply thirds. You also need to know how to multiply third brackets. So if you don't know how to do any of that, I'm going to leave a link in the description below or a couple of links in the description below for those lessons. Go and check them out if you don't know how to do this. Otherwise, you might have a bit of a difficult time accessing the contents of these lessons. Also, be sure to stay tuned throughout the entire video because I'm going to go through three different examples with each example more difficult than the previous example. And at the end, I'm going to give you some practice questions so you can test your knowledge and understanding. And then I'm going to reveal the answers. So let's begin. Here in our first example, we're being asked to rationalize and simplify fully 1 over root 5. So I'm just going to write this 1 over root 5 here. Now, what does it mean to rationalize a third? Essentially, it means to take the denominator or make the denominator that is currently a third. Uh, and we know that thirds are irrational roots of numbers. So you take that and you make it a rational number. So how do we go about doing this? Well, we're going to modify this fraction, and we're going to do that by manipulating the way it looks without changing its value. So I'm going to multiply this by 1, but not the one that you're thinking of, which is this. I'm going to multiply this fraction here by the denominator, this root 5. And look what happens. I'm going to multiply it by root 5 over root 5. And don't forget, any number divided by itself, like this one here, is just 1. So you are allowed to do this as it doesn't change the original value of the fraction. And what does this give us? Well, 1 times root 5 is going to give us root 5. And root 5 times root 5 is going to give us root 25. And we can break this down further. You see, the denominator here, the square root of 25, can actually be written as a rational number. The square root of 25 is indeed 5. And the numerator stays as it is root 5. So there we have it. This is the final answer. You've rationalized the denominator. It used to be the square root of 5. It is now just the whole number 5. And the numerator is now root 5, which is absolutely fine. This is the final answer. Now let's take a look at a more difficult example. Here we're being asked to rationalize 19 over the square root of 19. Um, and we're going to do it in the same way that we did the previous example. I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by this root 19. Whatever you end up having here is what you multiply to the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to do it like this. And 19 multiplied by the square root of 19 is going to give us 19 root 19. We just write them next to each other like this to simplify them. And this is going to be over the square root of 19 multiplied by the square root of 19. Now, from two lessons ago, we learned that if you multiply two square roots that have the same value in them, this just gives us the square root of that value squared, which further simplifies to give us the value that is in one of the roots. So in this case, the square root of 19 multiplied by the square root of 19 simplifies straight away to just give us 19. Now, this is not our final answer, as it can be simplified further. And don't forget the question said simplify fully. So what you can do at this stage is you can take the numerator, in this case, this part here, 19, and divide it by the denominator, 19 here. And of course, 19 divided by 19 is 1. So this ends up giving us an answer of 1, lots of root 19, which we can just simply write as the square root of 19. And this is our final answer. Now let's take a look at the most difficult example for this lesson. So rationalizing thirds with one term. And it looks like this. So the first thing we're going to do is exactly what we've done for the previous examples, which is multiply the numerator and denominator by this denominator here, root 13. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. I'm going to multiply the numerator by root 13 and the denominator by root 13. Now this is going to take a few more steps to calculate, but I'll show you how it's done. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write 39 plus 8 root 13 times root 13 like this. So it's going to be root 13 brackets 39 plus 8 lots of root 13. Don't forget when you're multiplying a term like this root 13 onto an expression, which is this numerator here, 39 plus 8 root 13, the multiplication distributes into each term of this expression. 
So I'm going to represent that by writing it like this. So now I know that to expand this bracket, I have to multiply this root 13 into each term here. And it's just a nice way of showing you're working out and keeping it very organized. Just in case you make a mistake, it'll be easier to spot when you go over your work. And now we're going to multiply the denominators together. Root 13 times root 13 just simplifies to give us 13. But now this isn't fully simplified. So I'm going to expand this root 13 into the bracket. So it's going to be root 13 times 39, which is 39 lots of root 13. We just write them next to each other like this. And this is going to be plus root 13 multiplied by 8 lots of root 13. So how you multiply these two out is you multiply this root 13 just by this root 13. And that's going to give us 13. The square root of 13 times the square root of 13 is the square root of 169, which breaks down to 13. And don't forget that this 8 is being multiplied onto this value to the right here. So this is going to give us 8 multiplied by 13. Okay? And again, this is all going to be over 13. And now let's simplify this further. So here we have 39 root 13 plus 8 times 13, which is 104. And this is all being divided by 13. This is all over 13. Now, at this stage, you might think this is fully simplified, but it can actually be simplified even further. You see, this 39 root 13 can be divided by this 13, and this 104 can also be divided by this 13. The 39 root 13 divides by 13 to give us the following. 39 divided by 13 is 3 and then it's lot of root 13. So we just divide the numbers by each other when you're dividing these two numbers here. Now, don't forget, if you have an expression as the numerator being divided by a single value, that value distributes into both of the terms that are above. So now we're going to have to do plus 104 divided by 13. If you don't know how to do this off the top of your head, you could just go up in your 13 times tables until you reach 104. And if we do this, we get the number 8. Now, this 13 has divided into both of these two terms here, leaving us with a fully simplified expression of 3 root 13 plus 8. And this is our final answer here. So that's it for our examples on rationalizing thirds with one term. So here are the practice questions. There are six of them. Answer all of them if you can. And in the comments below, tell me how many you got correct. And if you need any help with any of the questions, again, I'll be happy to support you in the comment section below. So I'm going to leave this up here for five seconds. And then at the end, I'm going to show the answers. Okay, here are the answers. And that's it for our lesson on rationalizing thirds with one term. Be sure to check out the next lesson, which is rationalizing thirds with two terms, which is more difficult than this topic. And if this lesson helped you out in any way, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out tremendously. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.